school. A place we all know and love. A place of wonders, miracles, and memories. Lots and lots of memories. Be it the times you pull some prank with your friends and got in trouble for it, or the times you spent doodling on your notebook rather than paying attention in class. It doesn't change the fact that our school days were, and for some of you, including myself, still are one of the most cherished times of our childhoods. But just like those memories that we so fondly cling on to, there are the memories that we would rather forget. The homework, the assignments, the exams. I'm sure that most of you must have found the concept of term tests and government examinations quite distasteful at some point. I, for one, still do. But surely we go through all that suffering for a reason, right? The countless all-nighters, the endless short notes. We've been taught that all of those things were more or less mandatory for us to succeed in life. But what if that wasn't the case? When it comes to the education system of Sri Lanka, the whole foundation of it relies on textbooks. The point where the government is willing to allocate up to 16 million Sri Lankan rupees in order to print the necessary textbooks for the year 2023. Now, this is a good thing. The textbook acts as a guide for students and provides knowledge to those who may not have the means to access it. However, the school curriculum itself presents weaknesses and notably one in particular. The present school syllabus of our country prioritizes the amount of knowledge included rather than the capability of students to understand that information. But the fact remains, it is indeed that same understanding that helps us to make use of what we've learned. And if you keep on cramming their minds with too many numbers and details, students come to the point where they don't even want to understand it and opt to memorize or by heart it instead. This is the kind of effect the current curriculum is having on students. And the evaluation system itself hasn't proven to be any different. All government exams, such as the scholarship examination, the O-levels and the A-levels, are considered to be major turning points in a student's life. And for the majority of the Sri Lankan society, the best way to evaluate their child's worth. Now, it is obvious what the flaw in this is, for how can someone judge an entirety of a person based on a few sheets of paper? Also given the fact that these exams mainly evaluate the academic intelligence of a student, in the cases such as low marks, they do not form the basis to call him or her a failure. According to the theory of Harvard psychologist Howard Gardner, a person can be comprised of multiple intelligence, such as linguistic verbal, logical mathematical, visual spatial, intrapersonal, interpersonal, naturalistic, etc. Every person has varying strengths in these intelligences and therefore have varying skills and talents in different areas. However, in traditional paper-based exams and standardized tests, only the modalities such as linguistic verbal and logical mathematical are measured. This leaves many students, particularly the athletic, artistic, social, or existential ones, with the feeling that they are not intelligent. But the reality is that their specific type of intelligence is simply not being measured. In other words, we can put it this way. Say you have four different animals, a monkey, a penguin, an elephant, and a fish. Now imagine you ask all four of them to go through one fair and equal selection to climb a tree. Will the results be impartial then? Of course not, for only the monkey is truly adapted to the task of climbing trees. 
It is a likewise problem that we as students face today. And even with the availability of extracurricular activities such as sports and music, they have been neglected and cast aside, considering them to be mere hobbies rather than pursuable job opportunities. What I'm suggesting here is a reform of sorts in the education and evaluation systems of our country. So rather than trying to complete the entire school syllabus by a given day, how about we take more time to actually understand the lesson? Because at the end of the day, education cannot be a rushed process. So rather than trying to digest a large amount of knowledge in a short period of time, how about we try to reduce the textbook material and take a longer period in order to understand it better. By this, we can encourage students to ask more questions regarding parts they don't understand and to be curious about more parts they don't know about, all the while saving the money gone into printing those extra pages. And after they have truly processed the information, we can get their own ideas on how to use those same concepts in other areas areas in which they might have never been used before. And believe me, at first, those ideas will come to be unorthodox, flawed, ridiculous even. But every master is an apprentice at the beginning, and with the right amount of dedication and guidance, these students can gain skills and talents they only dreamed of. And when it comes to the evaluation system, of course, like it or not, theory-based exams will be required in fields such as science and law, but not only theory-based. Practical use of what they've learned can be implemented starting at school, motivating them to come up with new scientific findings, interpretations of artworks, film productions, and musical compositions. And without focusing on trying to get a straight A report card, Students should be compelled to build up resumes and portfolios of their own because ultimately those are the things that are going to impress the employers at a job interview. The new curriculum can focus on volunteer work, entrepreneurships, and humanitarian projects, making sure these students are ready in the best ways possible for what's to come ahead. And this is only the beginning because after this leap of innovation, I assure you, Sri Lanka will never be the same again. The label of a bankrupt country and the custom narrow-mindedness of its society will cease to exist, opening gates to new wonders and miracles that will no doubt baffle all of us lucky enough to bear witness. Thank you.